despite being regarded as one of the greatest novelists to have ever written in the English language, Joseph Conrad had been raised as a native speaker of Polish. English hadn't even been his second language. French was. Conrad's reputation as a master pro stylist in what was only his third language is testimony to his genius. And Conrad's genius would not be contained by national boundaries, nor would it be restricted by linguistic barriers. Rudyard Kipling was one such person who regarded Conrad as a master pro stylist. A master pro stylist who brought a non-English sensibility into English literature, stating that, when I am reading him, I always have the impression that I am reading an excellent translation of a foreign author. Joseph Conrad was born Josef Theodor Konrad Kozinovsky on the 3rd of December 1857. His birthplace was the city of Berdychev, Ukraine, a part of the then Russian Empire. However, the city and surrounding area had once belonged to the Polish crown. Conrad's father, Apollo, had described his son's birth as having been in the 85th year of Muscovite oppression, a reference to the fact that Poland had been divided up among Russia, Prussia and Austria in the year 1772. Conrad's parents were both descended from socially prominent families. However, although Conrad was born into a landed gentry of Polish culture, his childhood years were met with uncertainty. Conrad's father, a translator of French and English literature, was dedicated to the cause of Polish independence from Russia and belonged to the Red Political Faction. The goal of the Red Political Faction was to re-establish the pre-partition boundaries of Poland. However, the Red Political Faction also advocated both land reform and the abolition of serfdom. Conrad's refusal to follow in his father's footsteps and his choice of exile over resistance were a source of lifelong guilt for Conrad. Because of Apollo's attempts at farming and his political activism, the family moved repeatedly. In May 1861, they moved to Warsaw, where Apollo joined the resistance against the Russian Empire. However, while there, he was arrested and imprisoned in the Warsaw Citadel before being exiled to Vologda, hundreds of miles north of Moscow, on the 9th of May 1862. Situated 310 miles north of Moscow, the city was known for its inhospitable climate, and the journey there was almost fatal for the young Joseph. Although Apollo's sentence was commuted in January 1863, the brutal winters had hastened the demise of his parents, with his mother, Eva, dying of tuberculosis on the 18th of April 1865. Despite the family having been relocated to northeastern Ukraine, where conditions were significantly better. Apollo did his best to teach Conrad at home. The boy's early reading introduced him to the two elements that later dominated his life. In Victor Hugo's Toilers of the Sea, he encountered the sphere of activity to which he would devote his youth. Shakespeare brought him into the orbit of English literature. Most of all, though, he read Polish Romantic poetry. On the 20th of February 1869, Joseph and his father moved to Krakow in the Austrian-held part of Poland. Two years prior, the Austrian Empire had been reformed into a dualist Austro-Hungarian Empire, which led to a slow yet steady process of liberalisation of Austrian rule in the region. Only a few months later, however, on the 23rd of May 1869, Apollo died, leaving young Joseph orphaned at the age of 11. Like Conrad's mother, Apollo had been gravely ill with tuberculosis. Following this tragic turn of events, the young Conrad was placed under the care of his uncle, who oversaw his education in vain. The young Conrad could adjust neither to the rigours of school life, nor to the personal attentions of a private teacher, who continually tried to reform his pupils' romantic views on life and the world, 
Conrad's unsatisfactory schoolwork and poor health were a source of constant problems for his uncle, only showing an interest in geography at times when he attended his lessons. In response to Conrad's illness, physicians believed that fresh air and physical work would toughen him, and his uncle hoped that clearly defined duties and the rigours of work would instil a sense of discipline in him. Since Conrad lacked the interest or desire to study, it was deemed crucial that he learn a trade. His uncle thought he could work as a sailor come businessman, who could combine maritime skills with commercial activities. It was in the autumn of 1871 when Conrad, then a 13-year-old, announced his intention to become a sailor. Conrad would later recall reading Leopold McClintock's book about his expeditions and his team yacht the Fox between 1857 and 1859, searching for clues about the fate of Sir John Franklin's lost Arctic expedition, which had departed from England back in 1845. Conrad also recalled having read books by the American writer James Fenimore Cooper and the English captain Frederick Marriott. On the 13th of October 1874, his uncle sent him to Marseille, France, to begin a merchant marine career aboard French merchant ships. His uncle also provided him with a monthly allowance of 150 francs. The four years which followed were more adventure-filled for the young Joseph Conrad, but apparently no more satisfying than his earlier teenage years. Arriving in Marseille in 1874, the not yet 17-year-old Conrad was to be looked after by a Polish man who served in French merchant ships. However, he was absent upon Conrad's arrival in France, and the ship pilots became Conrad's first instructors in sailing. After two months at Marseille, on the 15th of December 1874, Conrad, who had just turned 17, began his first sea voyage as a passenger in a small bark named the Mont Blanc, which reached St. Pierre, Martinique in the Caribbean on the 6th of February 1875. During the ship's return passage to Marseille between the 31st of March and the 23rd of May that year, Conrad may have been a crew member. His objectives for this maiden voyage were probably to promote his health and give him a closer look at sailor's work. The following month, on the 25th of June, he once again left in the Mont Blanc, now as an apprentice, arriving at St. Pierre on the 31st of July. After visiting several other Caribbean ports, the ship returned to France, arriving on the 23rd of December. In 1875, Conrad spent seven months at sea. This did not stir his enthusiasm for the seaman's profession. He gave himself six months rest from the sea, socialising and spending an excess of the generous allowance that his uncle provided for him. Although Conrad's uncle indulged his nephew's financial demands, he sent him letters which were critical of his father's side of the family, whom he regarded as dreamers and wastrels. On the 10th of July 1876, Conrad sailed for the West Indies as a steward, receiving a salary of 35 francs, which is only about a quarter of the allowance he received from his uncle. On this journey, he would sail in a bark named the San Antoine, arriving in St. Pierre on the 18th of August that year. The San Antoine, after visiting Martinique, St. Thomas and Haiti, returned on the 15th of February 1877 to Marseille. In his novel, The Arrow of Gold, Conrad alludes to smuggling by sea of arms and ammunition to the Carlist detachments in the south of Spain. The Carlists were a traditionalist and legitimist political movement who had been attempting to seize the throne of Spain for the descendants of Don Carlos, Count of Molina. The arms smuggling also apparently involved a man named Dominic Cervoni, a 42-year-old Corsican who had been the first mate aboard the San Antoine. In December 1877, it transpired that, as a foreigner and a Russian subject, Conrad could not serve on French ships without permission from the Russian consul. And since Conrad was eligible for military service in Russia, there was no chance of obtaining the consul's consent. In consultation with his uncle, 
it was decided that he should join the British Merchant Navy, where there were no such formalities as in France. This last turn of events seems in the long run to have been a fortunate one, since Conrad was to sail for the next 16 years on British ships and become a British subject in 1887. Conrad's metamorphosis from a French sailor to a British one caused him to master the language in which he would ultimately choose to write his novels. Conrad had a way of turning disadvantage into advantage. He made unconventional poetic use of a language he was forced to master by circumstance. A lesser talent would have been blunted by 20 trying years of life on deck. Conrad transformed his experiences into art. From his time in the East and West Indies, he gained the atmosphere as well as the insights into human nature that he was to draw upon while writing works for Allmeyer's Folly, which was published in 1895, a time when Conrad was in his thirties, to the rescue, which was published in 1920, four years before Conrad's death. However, the East and West Indies would not be the only sources of inspiration for Conrad's art. Indeed, the voyage that seems to have had the greatest impact on Conrad's life was not by sea at all, or at least, the most memorable part of the trip was not. That was the expedition that saw Conrad far up the Congo River on a rusty steamboat. Conrad had begun writing Allmeyer's Folly, his first novel, in 1889 just before commencing the trip up to Stanley Falls in 1890. In spite of the near torturous nature of the journey, he managed to make continual progress on the book while en route. The trip from Boma to Stanley Falls and back was one of the last Conrad ever made as a sailor. It marked, in a sense, the beginning of a brief but crucial period of his life, a period that came to end in 1894, the year his beloved uncle died. For it was then that Conrad decided to devote himself to writing full time. Shortly after making that decision, he was to marry Jesse George. The troubled pole without a clear cut family, nationality, language, love, or even calling in life was now Joseph Conrad, a British subject, a husband, and a writer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe.